so much for being here for this episode of Market Moves. My name is Erica White, alongside our Chief Investment Officer, Patrick Farrell, here to break down the market moving events of the last week, namely newly released UK jobs and wage data tells a confusing story. And meanwhile, oil prices fall despite tensions in the Middle East. But what's been the impact on markets. Well, Patrick is here to break it all down. Hi, Patrick. Welcome back. How are you? Very well, Erica. How are you? Good. Great for you to be here. What's the moving markets this past week? What can you share with us? Well, the last week we sort of, we did see some weakness come through in equity markets. And this is the first time that we've actually seen some weekly declines coming through, particularly from the US. So what's been causing it? A number of things. But when you actually add it all up, when you look at the rapidly changing environment of how many interest rate cuts the US Federal Reserve is looking to do this year, uh, we're getting commentators coming out every other day, ex- you know, basically saying, look, don't expect too much. Yeah. Maybe we'll get one this year, maybe, you know, maybe two. And at the moment, the market's sort of pricing in probably around only one, basic, one uh, rate cut this this year in 2024 what is happening is that the central banks are starting to diverge in terms of when those expectations are coming through so the ecb and the bank of england are likely to cut rates earlier than what the us will be however some of that wages numbers that we highlighted have come out and they've been on the upside surprise However, the employment numbers are weakening off a little bit. Yeah. And the Bank of England are very well aware that the situation for mortgagees is that those resets will continue to happen. It's going to have a big impact on uh, household cash flows. So that is going to slow down spending. So from a UK perspective, we're certainly not out of the woods. And the European sort of situation has already demonstrated that a lot of the industrial production continues to be weak. And that's their main sort of driver of growth coming yeah. out of Europe. And when you go back to the US, it's all about the consumer and the consumer have been spending money and they're very happy to spend money and they're very happy to put it on their credit cards. But that's only because it's a situation where they've still got jobs. Totally. You know, and they're very happy to sort of say, look, mm, I know I'm spending a lot of interest on my credit cards and other loans that I've got, but if I've still got my job, I'm still going to continue to do that. So what are the implications of these moves, Patrick? What can you share with us? Well, I think what it, what it is indicating is that bond markets have already sold off, so yields have already risen. Equity markets were very slow to sort of acknowledge the uptake in terms of where market yields have gone yeah. because they've just been so interested in terms of where earnings have been. And I think the situation in the US is that earnings have been quite strong, but we're about to go into the next earnings season. In fact, we've just started. And some of the earnings results so far for the banks have actually been quite good, but very muted in terms of their outlook. So it is very much the sort of buy the rumor, sell the fact potential that we are seeing at the moment. That's very much in association with we've seen a big rise in market yields, Mm. and that's going to put pressure on some of those long duration stocks, as well as the geopolitical risk that we've got in the Middle East. So we have a very big risk situation. Yeah. And I think investors are just sort of weighing up the pros and cons in in terms of what that looks like and are very happy to sort of take the latest earnings results but then maybe take risk off the table. And so this is where I think some of that market weakness that we're starting to see is actually going to follow through a little bit more. So that was something I mentioned earlier was that oil prices are falling despite these tensions. I think that when we do see these risen tensions, I think people do expect oil prices to rise, but that actually hasn't been happening. Well, I mean, it it certainly has been happening. So what we've been seeing is that oil prices and gold price has been going up quite substantially. Mm -hmm. And some of the other... Which is par for the course for when there is turmoil, right? Yeah, Yeah. it is par for the course. And this has been in an environment where the US dollar has appreciated as Mm. well. Now, because these commodities are priced in US dollars, if you've actually seen a rise in both the gold price, for instance, and the US dollar 
it's actually been a double whammy in terms of the the impact. So there has been a lot of demand for those commodities, and that's very much from a, a risk based approach around the tensions that are continually growing in the Middle East. Things are not de-escalating yeah. at all. Yeah. And from a market perspective, what we've got to realise is that even though the hostilities are, you know, are very worrying, the, the market potential is that if it does broaden out to a broad, in, into a, a broader conflict with Iran, yeah. that you end up, it is going to have an impact on oil markets and um, you're going to continue to see military forces in the area and tensions are going to be very, very high. So under that sort of regime, this is where the gold price is basically getting, seeing some of the benefit coming through, but also oil prices. So even though we had oil come off a little bit, it's still at pretty high levels and up around 20 odd percent so far this year. So, you know, that's all flowing into the inflationary impact right. that we're starting to see creep back in. So. It's a very circular economy, very much so, uh, in terms of the impacts on markets. And we've just got to keep an eye on things very, very closely. Thank you so much for all your expertise here, Patrick. Great to have you back. Thanks, Erica. Great to be back.